Hi, today we have on Casey. Casey, could you go ahead and start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So I'm so glad to be here. It's nice sitting down talking with you. I just saw you. I feel like it's been so long now, a couple months ago. But like she said, my name is Casey Gibson. I am a systems integration analyst associate for Lockheed Martin Corporation. So if you ever think about the fighter jets, that's who I work for. And in my hobbies and my free time, I actually have a pageant podcast. I have Crowning Moment, which I'm the host for, the host, editor, website creator, all of the above. You know, being a woman in STEM, you really have all of these different things that you can take on and learn and teach yourself. So that's definitely been one of the big learning processes I've had. And I also compete in pageants with having my pageant podcast. And I am currently the ultimate international Miss North Carolina, and I have nationals June 20. 8th through July 2nd in Orlando. So keep our fingers crossed, people. We're hoping to bring home the title to North Carolina. Yes, that's so exciting. So how do you manage your day-to-day -day life of your work with all of that? Yes. So I say I work two 40 hour jobs because doing podcast recordings, I do at least eight recordings a week on top of, so it kind of helps because I work from home and I have to clock out every time that I'm doing something that doesn't actually involve my real job with Lockheed. So I am constantly making up hours. <laughs> so when I, you know, have my work day, I work Monday through Thursday, which I do 10 hour shifts. So we're on four tens, which has been so amazing. When I interned a year ago for Lockheed Martin, we worked uh, 980s, I think is what it's called, where you would do, you know, five days a week working eight hours a day, and then it would trail over to the next week. So then you could maybe every other week have a Friday off. So now it's been, you know, relieving to have that Friday to, you know, do as many recordings as possible and edit as much on top of, you know, doing pageants and having a podcast and doing, you know, real work. It definitely has been one of my big things is learning that time management skill. And in college, I actually got a little bit of taste with being in COVID, you know, working from home and understanding, you know, how to still have a social life as well as making sure you're getting all of your goals and aspirations obtained while, you know, doing your daily tasks. So it has been kind of like a taste of having COVID kind of taught me how to have better time management skills and not just lay around and watch Stranger Things all day. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do as a systems integration analyst? What does it typically look like? So when you think of a systems integration, think of like a piece of paper. This is what I do. This is the best way to describe it. So if you were to write down your name, your job title, or say you want to go travel somewhere, you have to write down how much it costs or where you're going to, or if it's a business conference, what it is. So instead of us doing, you know, a paper trail of what you're doing for my job, I make all the automation. So I'm technically a developer and we use ServiceNow. If you're not familiar with it, it's just another kind of development form that allows you to make dashboards and reports and track metrics and create these forms like I'm talking about. So my main role is to be a lead developer in ServiceNow, but for Lockheed Martin, it's called Service Central. So that it may sound all crazy and confusing, but when you think about it, I'm just making your life easier by taking it in paper form and making it into automation or technology form. So it's all easy and at the tips of your finger. So you don't have to worry about, you know, where did that paper go? Or, oh goodness, did I sign up for that? You already did through using our online services. So it's really, it sounds complicated, but think of a development role. That's what I do. That's awesome. What made you want to go into that career field? It's kind of funny. So we'll have to backtrack a little bit. When I was in college, my main goal was I want to be a D1 cheerleader. That was my whole thing of going to college. I was like, that's all I want to do. Maybe I want to teach. I'm not sure. So I knew going into college, my main thing was to dance. So I ultimately went to Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and I was a division one cheer dance athlete. And so that also goes along with those time management skills from being in the gym every night to doing two to three practices a week on top of having two to three games, depending if it was women's or men's teams and having eight hours of study time that you have to make in every week. So I've kind of been practicing that time management skill since freshman year of college. And ultimately after my freshman year, they canceled the dance team due to coach issues. So I was like, oh my goodness, what I'm going to do. This was my only thing I had in mind. So I tried uh, doing teaching. That was my first major was education. And I wanted to do social studies and English. And I realized really fast that I love children, but I don't know if I want to be the person that is, you know, molding them and building them 
mentally. That was just not my thought. So then after that, cause this was like spring semester of freshman year, I'm like, okay, maybe not education. So then I tried psychology and my poor friends, I was their therapist for an entire semester. <laughs> and I also realized really fast, I have a lot of things to deal with. So I don't know if having to deal with everyone's problems on top of it is a good idea. So after that, I was said, you know what? Like my brother works at USC. He was a professor at the time. So I ultimately transferred to the University of South Carolina. Again, I was still in that weird gray area of, I don't know what I want to do. You know, what are my skills? What am I good at? And what can my credits transfer into? And when I transferred to USC, the only thing of my 30 credit semester that, that moved over was my French credit. So I knew going in, okay, I have to do college in three years and I have no time for breaks. I've got to get everything in order. And I finally, you know, I sat down with my dad and my grandpa who you're, they're like my biggest inspirations in life. They've kind of led me to where I am. And my dad was computer science and my grandpa was in the Navy. So he was like, well, you need structure. And my dad was like, you need computer science. You'll make a lot of money. You'll be a woman in that a male dominated field. And so in my head, I heard woman, and structure. And so I put together and I was like, I'm going to do integrated information technology. So with me having this pageant podcast, I'm really good at marketing and PR skills. And along with my major, I was in the business side of computer science. So from that, it kind of flourished into, wow, like I've never been really self-taught with technology, but I've had an iPod or an iPad, literally been around since Apple came out. So that was kind of my, okay, I know how to do this. And that's what ultimately led me into type to technology was my grandpa and my dad just sitting me down and saying, you can make a lot of money, but also this is a field where you have to earn your respect. And I'm one of those people that I love to earn it. Mm -hmm. And I love to make sure I'm working hard. And so that's how I ended up in technology, which is kind of a long story, but it it's better to say it that way where I'm not just like, oh, I transferred schools. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So what does the training typically look like? Just a college degree or do you need a master's? For me, I just have a, a basic four-year college degree. And on top of that, in the tech field that I work in, it's more important to have certifications. So right now I'm working on getting my Scrum Master certification as well as getting ServiceNow Development certified. And just a tip out there for people from the, I think it's June 31st to, or July 1st to August 31st, they're doing a free certification course with ServiceNow, which is a lot of development and project managing skills. So that's out there for people if you want to look it up. It's definitely something to go ahead and get those certifications certifications because I wish I would have started getting them in college. I had the opportunity to be Cisco certified, which is the networking side of technology. So when you think about plugging in routers or doing internet or tracing IP addresses, that whole side. So for me, it's definitely just, you really need that four-year degree. If not, get a two-year degree. It's really whatever you can do to get those certifications is really the most important part about it. That's great. So you said about building respect and getting to that goal. What is your end goal in your field? I love this question. I've actually been doing a lot of mock interviews, and this is one of the big ones that I'm so excited to talk about. And in my ultimate goal, like I love that project managing aspect of it, along with I mentioned the Scrum Master certification. I want to be able to manage an entire team, and being a woman in a male-dominated field managing an entire team is pretty, you know, uncommon, but for my team, I have an amazing boss, Lana and French, who she is managing a 25 person team. And ultimately that's my goal. Mm -hmm. I want to be, you know, that woman, that main girl in charge, you know, managing a huge team and being able to succeed in that and earning the respect of each and every one of my employees to get there. And so that's definitely, I want to be able to manage a team. There's a really cool part of Lockheed. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but in Fort Worth, Texas, where like our main planes, like our fighter jets are being built, it's in a mile a mile long assembly line and it starts from parts and ends at the mile line with a plane. And so I ultimately want to either be somewhere over there managing that or simply just doing it virtually because that's what I'm doing right now. That's awesome. Have you seen any like setbacks being a woman in your field or what is that like to have to overcome that? I personally have not experienced any of those setbacks, but I have seen and heard a lot from other people, not in my company, but outside companies. I know one of the issues that had come up was taking credit for your own project or someone taking credit for you. And that definitely is one of those things in my company I've been very careful about. I work on a lot of different classified projects and unclassified projects. So when it comes to classified, you kind of have to just let who's over that project 
take charge. And because I don't have that top secret clearance that I'm needed to be working on this project. So for the unclassified projects, I'm making sure my name, my like full name, Cassandra Grace Gibson is on everything because it is so important that you get the respect that you deserve and the recognition from it. And so a really cool thing that our company does is Bravo awards and recognition awards through it's called next gen. And so each month, like we have like a set amount of budget where if you get an award, you get like $75 added to your paycheck each month. So that's kind of cool. And I love, I have four of those now from doing just a bunch of different work. So just definitely get that recognition and make sure you're being, you know, recognized for all of these things that you're doing. That's great. I'm going to leave it on one more question for you. What do you think is important for girls going into this field or something that you would find inspirational that you wish you knew before you started? Definitely going in as an intern, soak up everything like a sponge. I was one of those people that along with my platform, it's listen, then speak. I miss the listen aspect of it. I was just question, 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 question. And I wasn't listening and being an active listener in communication and conversations that I was having with people. So make sure you have those listening ears on and it'll help you from asking multiple questions over and over. And that's one of those things that just be an active listener. So I wish somebody would have told me that in the beginning is just be the sponge, soak up as much knowledge as you can. Also get those certifications as many as you can and your company sometimes will pay for them. So don't be afraid to ask for money for those certifications. Perfect. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. It was an honor. Thank you. Bye.